Welcome back to another Timing System installation video by Cloys. I'm Cody Smith, and today we're demonstrating Timing System removal and installation in 2015 to 2020 Ford F-150 5 liter Coyote engines. This only covers engines with the 13726548 firing order. If you have a 2011 to 2014 F-150 or a Mustang 5 liter V8, please jump over to our other video that covers the installation in those models. The 2015 to 2020 F-150s have a unique procedure due to the alternate firing order, so make sure you're following the correct procedure for your engine. For our video today, we're utilizing the Cloys 9-0757S timing kit. The Cloys timing kit will contain the primary and secondary chains, all chain guides, the primary and secondary chain tensioners, and an upgraded chrome-ollie steel crankshaft sprocket. The kit is also available without the crankshaft sprocket by adding an X to the end of the part number. To view all the current Cloys kit and component offerings, confirm which kit is correct for your vehicle, and to find additional product information, please visit the parts finder at cloys.com. The timing components can be serviced with the engine in the vehicle. You will need to remove the valve covers and the front engine cover to access and service the components. And it's also recommended to remove the spark plugs to make it easier to rotate the engine. You will need to do some manual engine rotation during this procedure. Once the components are visible, rotate the engine until the crankshaft key is at the 730 position and confirm the R timing mark on the right hand exhaust phaser is up. If your crank key is at 730 and the exhaust mark is not up, rotate the crankshaft one full revolution and check again. This is the ideal position to start disassembly. Don't worry about the left hand bank or which stroke the engine is on. This procedure ensures you're in the correct position to begin service. Just remember throughout the process that the timing is set by aligning the marked chain links to the marked sprocket teeth. Exact shaft locations are not critical as long as this procedure is followed and all the marks are aligned properly. Start the disassembly by removing the right hand primary chain tensioner. Then the tensioner guide followed by the right hand chain guide and the chain. You can slightly rotate the crankshaft to shift the chain slack as necessary. Be aware that once the primary chain is removed, the camshafts may jump clockwise or counterclockwise due to valve spring pressures. This is completely normal. In fact, if the cams do not move, use a wrench or a quality set of adjustable pliers on the flats of one of the camshafts and attempt to rotate. What you're looking for is a spot where the cams are at rest, where no valves are open and no valve spring pressures are attempting to rotate the cams. You will find that the cams are either in a resting position already, or they will jump to a resting position with little to no effort. Once you have confirmed the cams are at rest, remove the camshaft phaser attachment bolts, then gently start to work the phasers off of the cams. Turn the secondary tensioners upper contact surfaces clockwise 90 degrees, then slip the phasers and secondary chains off of the camshafts. Place the phasers appropriately so you remember that they were removed from the right hand bank. You can then remove the secondary tensioner and the secondary chain guide. Next, carefully remove the camshaft phaser oil screens from the camshafts. These will need to be cleaned and reinstalled before reassembly. With the right bank disassembled, you now need to properly position the left bank for disassembly. Rotate the crankshaft counterclockwise almost half a rotation to place the crankshaft key at the 330 position. Confirm the L mark on the left hand exhaust camshaft phaser is in the two to three o'clock position. You can now repeat the disassembly process from the right bank on the left bank.
Before we start the installation, there's a few things I need to discuss. The first is hardware. The camshaft phaser attachment bolts in Coyote engines are torque to yield bolts. They're intended for one time use only, so you should always source new bolts before you start this job. At the time of filming, Cloys does not offer the phasers or the bolts, but check our parts finder to see if they're available when you're ordering parts. Next, let me quickly explain the deactivation and activation of the tensioners. The primary tensioners are activated simply by pulling the activation pin and can be easily deactivated by compressing the piston and reinserting the pin. The use of a vise can be helpful. The secondary tensioners, however, have a unique activation procedure and cannot be deactivated once activated. The tensioners come with a compression limiting clip which prevents premature activation. Once the tensioners are installed and the phasers and secondary chains are in place, you must make sure to compress and release the tensioners to properly activate. Failure to manually activate the secondary tensioners can lead to catastrophic engine failure once the secondary chains wear over time. Do not forget this step. Now let's begin the assembly process by properly timing the phasers and secondary chains. On both sets of phasers, the double marked links of the secondary chain straddle the mark on the intake phaser and the single marked link aligns to the mark on the exhaust phaser. Once properly timed, place the phaser and chain assemblies appropriately to avoid mixing up the left and right hand banks. Starting with the left hand bank, reinstall the cleaned oil supply screens into the nose of the camshafts. Install the secondary tensioner, then the guide. Once fully seated, remove the compression limiting clip, but be careful not to compress the tensioner yet. Next, install the left hand bank phasers and secondary chain. First, make sure the assembly is still properly timed, then carefully rotate the assembly, keeping the chain tightly engaged so the indexing dowels of the phaser properly align with the dowel features of the camshafts. Once aligned, slowly work the phasers onto the camshafts, making sure they properly engage and seat. Once seated, install an attachment bolt finger tight to keep the phaser in place. If needed, you can slightly rotate one of the cams to achieve proper engagement. Once the assembly is properly in place, using a wrench on the camshaft flat features, install all phaser attachment bolts and torque the specification. Torque three bolt style phaser bolts to 11 foot pounds plus an additional 90 degrees. Later model single bolt style phaser bolts should be torqued to 30 foot pounds, Loosen 360 degrees, then torque to 20 foot-pounds, plus an additional 150 degrees. If the flats are not accessible at this time, you can wait until the full timing system is installed, then rotate the engine to properly position the cams and torque the bolts. Next, make sure that the secondary chain is properly positioned within the ridges of the secondary tensioner and chain guide. Then compress and release the tensioner to activate. Make sure you notice the internal springs start to function. Install the new crankshaft sprocket. You can now install the left hand primary chain. Align one mark chain link to the L mark on the exhaust phaser and place the other end of the chain over the inside row of the teeth on the crankshaft sprocket. The goal is to align the marked link to the marked tooth of the crankshaft sprocket. If the marks do not align, make note of the direction that the crankshaft needs to rotate move the chain out of the way, and slightly rotate the crankshaft. Repeat this process until the mark chain link aligns to the mark tooth of the sprocket. Once the chain is aligned properly on both ends, install the chain guide, tensioner guide, and the tensioner. Slight rotations of the crankshaft can be made to shift the chain slack as necessary. The tensioner and guide attachment bolts torque to 89 inch pounds. Recheck the upper and lower timing marks, then pull the tensioner's activation pin. Now we're ready for right hand bank assembly, but we must first rotate the crankshaft keyway clockwise back to the original 730 starting position. Install the oil supply screens, the secondary tensioner and guide, then the phaser and chain assembly. Don't forget to activate the secondary tensioner and torque the phaser attachment bolts to specification. Now install the right hand primary chain. Align the upper marked link to the R mark on the exhaust phaser. Once again, slight crankshaft movement can be used to align the lower timing marks. Once aligned, install the chain guide, tensioner guide, and the tensioner, slightly shifting chain slack as necessary to install the components. Torque the attachment bolts to 89 inch pounds. 
recheck the alignment of the right hand timing marks, then activate the right hand tensioner. If the timing procedure was performed properly, the left hand exhaust phaser mark should be pointed down with the right hand exhaust phaser mark up. You are now ready to reinstall the timing cover, valve covers, spark plugs, and the accessories. Please follow the proper procedure on applying gasket sealant to the appropriate areas of the front cover and torque all the bolts appropriately. Like always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please contact our tech line. And to stay up to date on all things Cloys, including tech and product information, and more videos like this one, please sign up for Shopmasters at cloys.com.